What causes high blood pressure? Two forms of high blood pressure have been described. Essential primary hypertension and secondary hypertension. Essential hypertension is a far more common condition and accounts for 95% of hypertension. The cause of essential hypertension is multifactorial, that is, there are several factors whose combined effect produce hypertension. In secondary hypertension, which accounts for 5% of hypertension, the high blood pressure is secondary to a specific abnormality in one of the organs or systems of the body. Essential hypertension affects approximately 72 million Americans, yet its basic causes or underlying defects are not always known. Nevertheless, certain associations have been recognized in people with essential hypertension. For example, essential hypertension develops only in groups or societies that have a fairly high intake of salt exceeding 5.8 grams daily. Salt intake may be a particularly important factor in relation to essential hypertension several situations and excess salt may be involved in the hypertension that is associated with advancing age. African American background, obesity, genetic susceptibility and kidney failure. The Institute of Medicine of the National Academies recommends healthy 19 to 50 year old adults consume only 3.8 grams of salt to replace the average amount lost daily perspiration and to achieve a diet that provides sufficient amounts of other essential nutrients. Genetic factors are thought to play a prominent role in the development of essential hypertension. However, the genes for hypertension have not yet been identified. The current research in this area is focused on the genetic factors that affect the renin-angiotensin. This system helps to regulate blood pressure by controlling salt balance state of elasticity of the arteries. Approximately 30% of cases of essential hypertension are attributable to genetic factors. For example, in the United States, the incidence of high blood pressure is greater among African Americans, among Caucasians or Asians. Also, in individuals who have one or two parents with hypertension, high blood pressure is twice as common as in the general population. Rarely, certain unusual genetic disorders affecting the hormones of the adrenal gland may lead to hypertension. The vast majority of patients with essential hypertension have in common a particular abnormality of the arteries, an increased resistance, stiffness or lack of elasticity in the tiny arteries that are most distant from the heart. The arterioles supply oxygen-containing blood and nutrients to all of the tissues of the body. The arterioles are connected by capillaries in the tissue to the veins, which returns the blood to the heart and lungs. Just what makes the peripheral arteries become stiff is not known. This increased peripheral arteriolar stiffness is present in those individuals whose essential hypertension is associated with genetic factors, obesity, lack of exercise, overuse of salt, and aging. Inflammation also may play a role in hypertension since a predictor of the development of hypertension is the presence of an elevated, elevated C-reactive protein level. The Metabolic Syndrome and Obesity Genetic factors play a role in the 
constellation of findings that make up the metabolic syndrome. Individuals with the metabolic syndrome have insulin resistance with a resulting tendency to have type 2 diabetes mellitus. Obesity, especially associated with a marked increase in abdominal girth leads to high blood sugar, hyperglycemia, elevated blood lipids, vascular inflammation and hypertension which all lead to premature atherosclerotic vascular disease. The American Obesity Association states the risk of developing hypertension is 5 to 6 times greater in obese Americans aged 20 to 45 compared to non-obese individuals of the same age. The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition reported in 2005 waist size was a better predictor of a person's blood pressure than body mass index BMI. Men should strive for a waist size of 35 inches. The epidemic of obesity contributes to hypertension in children, adolescents and adults. What are the causes of secondary high blood pressure? As mentioned previously, 5% of people with hypertension have what is called. This means that the hypertension in these individuals is secondary to caused by specific disorder of a particular organ or blood vessel such as the kidney, adrenal gland or aortic artery. Three types of secondary high blood pressure hypertension are discussed below. Renal, kidney hypertension and coactation of the iota. Renal, kidney hypertension. Diseases of the kidneys can cause secondary hypertension. This type of secondary hypertension is called renal hypertension because it is caused by a problem in the kidneys. One important cause of renal hypertension is narrowing stenosis of the artery that supplies blood to the kidneys. In younger individuals, usually women, the narrowing is caused by a thickening of muscular wall of the arteries going to the kidney. In older individuals, the narrowing generally is due to heart fat containing atherosclerotic plague how does narrowing of the renal artery cause hypertension first the narrowed renal artery impairs the circulation of blood to the affected kidney this deprivation of blood then stimulates the kidney to produce the hormones renin and angiotensin these hormones along with aldosterone from the adrenal gland cause a constriction and increased stiffness in the peripheral arteries throughout the body which results in high blood pressure. Renal hypertension is usually first suspected when high blood pressure in a young individual or a new onset of high blood pressure is discovered in an older person. Screening for a renal artery narrowing then may conclude radioactive imaging ultrasonographic sound wave imaging or magnetic resonance imaging. The purpose of these tests is to determine whether there is a restricted blood flow to the kidney and whether angioplasty removal of the restriction in the renal arteries is likely to be beneficial. However, if the ultrasonic assessment indicates a high resistive index within the kidney, angioplasty may not improve the blood pressure because chronic damage in the kidney from long-standing hypertension already exists. If any of these tests are abnormal or the doctor's suspicion of renal artery narrowing is high enough, renal angiography Angiography is the ultimate test to actually visualize the narrowed renal artery. A narrowing of the renal artery may be treated 
by balloon angioplasty. In this procedure, physician threads a long narrow tube catheter into the renal artery. Once the catheter is there, the renal artery is widened by inflating a balloon at the end of the catheter and placing a permanent stent, a device that stretches the narrowing. This procedure usually results in an improved blood flow to the kidneys and lower blood pressure. Moreover, the procedure also preserves the function of the kidney that was partially deprived of its normal blood supply. Only rarely surgery needed these days to open up the narrowing of the renal artery. Any of the other types of chronic kidney disease that reduce the function of the kidney can also cause hypertension due to hormonal disturbances and retention of salt. It is important to remember that not only can kidney disease cause hypertension, but hypertension can also cause kidney disease. Therefore, all patients with high blood pressure should be evaluated for the presence of kidney disease so they can be treated appropriately. Adrenal gland tumors Two rare types of tumors of the adrenal glands are less common secondary causes of hypertension. The adrenal glands sit right on top of the kidney. Both of these tumors produce excessive amounts of adrenal hormones that cause high blood pressure. These tumors can be diagnosed from blood tests, urine tests and imaging studies of the adrenal gland. Surgery is often required to remove these tumors or the adrenal gland adrenalectomy which usually relieves the hypertension. One of the types of adrenal tumors causes a condition that is called primary hyperaldosteronism because the tumor produces excessive amounts of the hormone aldosterone. In addition to the hypertension, this condition causes the loss of excessive amount of potassium from the body into the urine which results in a low level of potassium in the blood. Hyperaldosteronism is generally first suspected in a person with hypertension when low potassium is also found in the blood. Also, certain rare genetic disorders affecting the hormones of the adrenal gland can cause secondary hypertension. The other type of adrenal tumor that can cause secondary hypertension is called Aphiochromocytoma. This tumor produces excessive catecholamines which include several adrenaline related hormones. The diagnosis of aphiochromocytoma is suspected in individuals who have sudden and recurrent episodes of hypertension that are associated with flushing of the skin, rapid heart beating and sweating in addition to the symptoms associated with high blood pressure. Coarctation of the iota Coarctation of the iota is a rare hereditary disorder that is one of the most common causes of the hypertension in children. This condition is characterized by a narrowing of a segment of the iota, the main large artery coming from the heart. The iota delivers blood to the arteries that supply all of the body organs including the kidneys. The narrowed segment of the iota generally occurs above the renal artery which causes a reduced blood flow to the kidneys. This lack of blood to the kidneys prompts the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone hormonal system to elevate the blood pressure. Treatment of the coarctation is usually the surgical correction of the narrowed segment of the iota. Sometimes balloon angioplasty as described above for renal artery stenosis can be used to widen, dilate the coarctation of the iota.